Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of Role Model Experts Cafe. I'm your host, Dr. L, the Parents Whisperer, and today with me, I have an amazing lady, Miss Marty Win. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Marty Winder Adams. Did I you say that it. correctly? Marty? <laughs> you sure did, Dr. L. <laughs> I got tongue twisted there. It's, it's a right. mouthful. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So, Marty, I've seen you a couple of times in our community. I love how you show up and your message. Uh, please tell our audience that are primarily parents. Uh, why the topic that you cover is important and should be on their radar, and then we can go from there. Uh, well, thank you very much for this opportunity. I am a divorce coach. I work specifically with women, um, but I think that that has a big benefit on the whole family. Divorce can be extremely challenging. It has a huge impact on kids. And I really believe that if parents have um, some support, some understanding, some education and grounding that they can go through a divorce and support their kids and have fantastic relationships with their ch children and possibly even with each other going forward. Um, there's no reason you have to become mortal enemies and adversaries during a divorce. Uh, I mean, that does happen, but I think there's even ways if there's high conflict situations to reduce the impact on kids. And that's the most important thing I really believe. Yeah, that's actually really important, a good point. And one of the things that I feel is out there in society is that there's plenty of support for families to, you know, be a traditional family. But then when it comes to other situations that happen, then all of a sudden the support disappears, be it family support, be it community support. It just doesn't seem to be there. And people are left to their own devices of figuring things out. So thank you for what you do. Thank you. And, and I want to stress too, I, I believe that families um, being able to work things out is always the, the ultimate option. But the reality is that that's just not possible in all situations. And I don't think people should feel guilty because of that. I think it's a, you know, things happen in life and having a positive outlook and letting go of that and moving forward um, to, to make yourself happy, help your kids be happy, um, not keep them in difficult situations is is just as important. So I, I appreciate that. Yeah. So Marty, how did you get involved in this in the first place? It's kind of been a long path. I have to say I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not a spring chicken in this field. <laughs> um, I started out, I went through my own divorce in um, years ago, 30 years ago. Um, and it, it was not a good divorce. Uh, it was a challenge. We did not have children but it still was really, really difficult. And there wasn't a lot of support. There was a lot of legal support, but not much emotional and practical support. Right. Um, at the same time, I was a teacher and I was teaching kids um, in first, second, third grade. And what I found was that a lot of those kids, the behavior problems that they, we started seeing at school um, related to difficulties in the family. And the families weren't comfortable coming forward and talking to the school, or um, maybe we're trying to even keep it quiet from the children, but the kids were picking up on the vibes in the family. Oh, yeah. And so from there, I moved into, um, I did a lot of family and divorce mediations. I've done hundreds of those, worked as a domestic client advocate for um, women that were in abusive situations for several years. And then I started doing executive and leadership coaching. And what I found is, again, the same thing as I found in the school. People that were having a lot of troubles at work, especially with interpersonal communication, were typically, were often having challenges in their personal relationships um, with their spouse, with their partners, significant others. So um, I, I guess I kind of just evolved to the point where I didn't think mediation was helping people. It was a one, one shot deal. And yes, it did help resolve some conflict, but there wasn't any kind of long-term skill building involved. And then I really love the coaching element I was working with, with executives. So when I found out there was this thing called divorce coaching, I just, I, I just, it really drew me. So I've been doing that since um, 2018, pretty much exclusively. Um, mm -hmm. I work with that now. Now, with the pandemic that happened a couple of years back, um, have you seen any changes in any of the uh, clients and the people that are coming in seeking for help and support? I think, yes, I have. Um, initially, you know, the legal community was like, oh my gosh, this, this kind of forced on top of each other is really going to create high levels of divorce. It didn't, believe it or not. 
what happened were people just hunkered down because there really wasn't, there wasn't the option to go to court. You know, people were literally on hold with their divorce for a couple of years. Courts were only doing emergency hearings. Now they're doing, now with things have opened up, but there's that whole backlog that's sitting there. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of the clients I'm seeing now, a lot of the people that are, that have been in this situation for a couple of years, really frustrated because of the length of time it's taken. Um, they've been trying to co-parent without some kind of an agreement. So there's been a lot more stress and strain, mm -hmm. you know, the, the whole pandemic issue. Um, do we send kids back and forth? Um, who is my, who is my still married ex <laughs> interacting with that might potentially be exposing my children to somebody that has COVID or somebody else's kids that have COVID? A lot of uncertainty. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's led to a little bit more confrontation and um, conflict in a lot of the divorces that have been going on. Okay. Uh, what, so you've been doing this for a while. What are the typical challenges that you see uh, people come to you with? Like, what are the things that they're facing, the struggles? And also, I know that when you want change in your life, you also need to change certain things about yourself or your situation, right? So what are those challenges as well? Maybe we could shed some light on that as well. I think the biggest challenge that I see, because I work with women, so I, I can't speak to what, you know, what, what men going through divorce might experience, sure. but I think a lot of the women I, I work with, uh, they tend to be maybe women in their 35 plus, typically have children. Um, a lot of them are very high achieving professionals. And a lot of people have just real concerns about what do I do now? You know, for the last five or 10 years or longer, I have identified myself as in this order, wife, mother, professional. So now what do I do? <laughs> like, who am I? Um, right. How, what do I, what skills do I have that I can put in to be a single mom? You know, and not saying that the, the father or the partner isn't still going to be involved, but you kind of go into that mentality of, I can't do this. I don't have it. Um, a lot of people I see struggle with how to deal with the legal profession, um, how to talk to attorneys, how to, keep my, how to keep my legal bills as low as possible going through the divorce. Mm -hmm. um, what professionals do I need to have? Who do I need to consult with? So you're right. Making that change is a big shift. It's a mental shift. It's a physical shift and it's an emotional shift. So yeah. just having a resource to talk to who's impartial, who's not, um, not on one person's side or the other, but really as that neutral coach to just ask questions, help people get clarity on what they want to do in the future. Um, Cause the thing that I find is frustrating a little bit for people going through divorce is you have to make so many decisions like in a short period of time, I mean, lifelong decisions in a very short period of time when you're not even clear on what you want to do a year from now. So mm -hmm. my, I see my role as helping people clarify what do they want to do in the future so they can make the right decisions today during the process. Okay. That's really helpful. Um, I guess one other question that I would have is, I hear this often about the children and leaving the children out of it and making sure that you make the decisions in the best interest of the children. And obviously children are picking up on this vibe. Uh, what can we do so that they don't feel helpless that something is happening to them and they have no control over it? That is such an important thing. Um, kids that feel out of control are more likely to have behavioral problems, have trouble in school, have problems with their own relationship. So one of the things I encourage parents to do is to sit down, if they can, to sit down together and have a talk with their kids at an age appropriate level. So number one, no child, I don't care if they're 40, they don't need to know the intimate reasons why their relationship broke down. What mm -hmm. they need to know is that mom and dad are still mom and dad, they're still going to be involved in their kid's life and they still support each other as parents going forward. So giving kids that sense of mom and dad have made this decision. It's not one person's fault. One person isn't to blame. Um, you know, now there are situations, I'm not going to sugarcoat this, where there is a real legitimate safety reason for a person living, leaving a relationship. So I'm going to exclude that right. specific situation here. But typically, unless that's an issue, Parents can sit down and, and share that with the kids. Um, and then 
encourage the kids to say, we know this is going to be tough and we're here for you. And if you have questions or concerns or you don't think something is working right, we want you to have the ability to come and talk to us at any point in time. We're going to listen. We're not going to get mad if you tell us that you're angry with us or you don't understand what's going on. We're going to work through this as a family, even though mom and dad are still living in two separate households. And mm -hmm. kids get that. They do. Um, and then, of course, it's following through with that. So when the kids do come to you, finding time, holding space for them, um, allowing them to open up and share their, their concerns and fears, and maintaining that connection with both parents being involved in the child's life. Right. Um, and that's important because we want to make sure we avoid the favoritism and things like that so that both parents can stay involved in the children. That's very important. Yes. Yeah. That's so important, I think. And, and kids that go through that, um, it takes a while. You know, it may take them six, six months to a year to adjust to that. But as long as they know they've still got mom and dad and they're still going to have regular contact with mom and dad and that mom and dad are not going to be in conflict forever, that mm -hmm. really helps kids adjust quickly. That's good. That's good to know. Thank you for that. So for audience members who are watching this and they're contemplating the decision, they're stuck in a situation where they're not where they want to be, but they can't stay where they are neither. Uh, that being the situation, what would be the one tip or a couple of suggestions that you would have uh, as far as being able to move in or step in the right direction or make things better for them? I think the, the first key thing is to really make sure that divorce is what you want to do, because that's, that's a pretty hard card to play on a partner. If it's not like if don't, don't throw that out there, unless that's something you've really contemplated and then really sit down and think about it. Um, is this what I want to do? How can I present this to my partner, to my spouse um, in a way that's going to be not blaming or shaming or hurtful? but in a way that's going to express my needs, recognizing how this may impact them. And really strategically planning that conversation helps to set the tone for how things are going forward. And it may take a month or two to, to plan that, to talk, to think through what is the partner likely to respond? How can I, how can I, um, assure them that I am going to continue to work with them, that I'm not just pulling out of this relationship and leaving them high and dry or um, not having any concern for their feelings. So I think that first conversation is really critical for setting the tone for all future interactions with each other. Right. That's really important. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I know that there's a lot more involved in this. So how can people reach out for support or connect with you uh, for more suggestions? Sure. The best place probably to reach me is through my website, www.divorcecoach4, the number four, women.com. And again, um, I do work with women, but I think the, the, the thing is, is that even if one person has some um, support, it makes the whole process easier for everybody. So, um, and I do have some, I, I'd be happy to share information. There's a free strategy planning session. I just really encourage people to reach out. Right. Thank you so much for what you do. Uh, see guys, I told you, this is something that you need to know. Uh, even if it's not you, there are probably people around you that might try to keep things quiet as we discussed earlier. Uh, but they're not in a happy situation and knowing that there are people that they can reach out to is important. So I'm going to go ahead and put all the details of how to contact Marty in the description box of this video. Please go out and check those things out. If you know yourself or others that are in need of those, that kind of support, please go ahead and share this information with them. Don't let them be there alone and make sure that a professional is actually helping them, not just with the legal stuff, but actually the real life decision-making process that uh, requires clarity of mind, clarity of purpose, uh, being aligned with your values and things like that. And Marty does a lot of that. So definitely check out, make sure that we role model this behavior for our children, that we don't have to do all the heavy lifting ourselves. Uh, also, if you haven't already done so, make sure that you go ahead and click subscribe uh, so that you get notified of the latest experts that come here with their gifts and their expertise uh, and you get to connect with them. Uh, and in the meantime, Marty, thank you so much for 
um, sharing your wisdom with us. Uh, any final words for our audience members before we finish the session? And no, I just like to say thank you, Dr. L, and just it really encourage people not, this is not a thing to feel guilty about. This is a part of life. And there, like you said, there are people to support you through this. Right, absolutely. Oftentimes we have relationships or, or we make decisions in life every single day. Some of them turn out right. Some of them we learn from. Uh, mm -hmm. And if this happens to be a case where you've learned something, it's time to move on, right? And that's important for you to be able to know how to move on. Um, right. So that's important as well. So thank you, Marty. See thank you guys you. around until the future episodes. Cheers.